The wise man gets on a boat for a joy ride. Oh, boatman, do you know why the sunrise? Do you know the reason of the moon's waning? Do you know what causes the high tides? The boatman just laughs in a surprise. The scholar says, oh, you have just wasted your life. The wise questions again after some moments. Old man, do you know why the sky is blue? Why the mountains stand, why the rivers are true? The boatman just laughs and nods his head. The scholar says, there is nothing more to say. Ah, you are such a dread. And then there was a storm and the waves rose high. The wise man feared that he would die. Shouted, oh boatman, what kind of danger is this? Is the boat going to sink? Will I drown in this abyss? The boatman asked, do you know how to swim? No, said the wise. Ah, such a waste to the brim. All that you learn, O oh wise, it is valueless, unless you save yourself or else it is just a mess. Very good evening. Uh, this is Shauna from Asian College of Teachers. We welcome you heartily to another show uh, from Asian College of Teachers. The basic essence of the poem, which I just uh, recited, is that whatever knowledge you have, whether it is of anything, it doesn't carry any meaning until you know the techniques of saving yourself. And what is the technique of saving for a teacher? That is exactly our point of discussion. Today, we have got ourselves with one person, Bhavna. She is joining as a consultant. She is working as a consultant English teacher for Lingua Phila Hubs based out of United Kingdom. She has got more than 11 years of knowledge with an independent pre-primary secondary school in United Kingdom. And specifically, she has been helping to learn the difficult professional, the SPLD, Specific Learning Difficulty Professional. Bhavna is also a certified TEFL graduate teacher, and she brings along with us a variety of knowledge to enrich ourselves in this particular show, which we call Techniques of English Teaching to the Speakers of Other Language. We welcome Bhavna right joining here directly from London, United Kingdom. Bhavna, a very warm welcome from Asian College of Teachers to the show. Thank you for having me. So Bhavna, as uh, we have been uh, trying to get a conclusion that the boatman only knew the skill that is to swim. The wise man told a lot of things, but it ultimately doesn't matter until you know the techniques of teaching. So if I may ask you the question that, what do we actually mean by speakers of other languages? Okay, so speakers of other languages include a different language you're learning. So your native language could be Spanish, it could be Italian, which is known as L1. Um, so again, that's your first language. The second language is something that you're learning. So it could be English, it could be um, Italian. So that's known as L2. So speakers of other languages are known as L2. Right. Thank you. So what you told that uh, the, the first one being L1 and L2. So uh, with that, uh, uh, an obvious pertinent question comes that as you have been into teaching for quite a long time with special children, as well as into English teaching. So from your point of view, what do you think that what plays an important role? Like, is it basically the language which sometimes comes as a barrier or is it, it acts as a kind of an advantage to the students like how would you how would you tell on this okay um i would say language can be a barrier um not knowing how to speak another language um can bring a barrier to like communicating so ideally it would be wise to like learn that language maybe in bite-sized steps for you to learn english or speak English. Right. So according to you, it cannot be a barrier. Like it, it is a free flowing not, nature. Not at all. I don't think anything can be a barrier as long as you, you know, you work hard, you focus. It's all about you wanting to progress. So it's like learning anything if you wanted to learn 
I don't know, if you wanted to learn gardening, you know, you'd go out and learn it. And there's lots of resources available to do that. So you could learn, you know, you can learn through your family or your friends, or you could learn by going to a school or a college. Um, I don't think there's no barrier to anything. You can achieve whatever you want if you put your mind to it. Right. As you are into United Kingdom and the type of, uh, I would say, the culture uh, in terms of language, in terms of knowing people is concerned. What is the kind of, a, if you can just give us an example, what is like when you get a, a you know, classroom of people coming from multifarious backgrounds? So like, how do you deal with them? What would be the basic idea behind taking a class with those kind of people? That would be very interesting, actually. Um, you've got a wide variety of individuals from different cultures. So I think it's a great way of, you know, doing, um, what do we call it, uh, an icebreaker where you find out a bit about each other using... Uh, uh, just to, sorry to interfere, you are not audible. If you can just uh, oh. sound a little bit, yeah. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I would say it's an excellent idea of playing a group introduction as a whole, using basic English skills, where each one can say a limited amount, introducing themselves. So I could say, I'm Bhavna, I am from the UK. And another person could say, you know, I am someone, I am from Italy. So it's a great way to build the communication up. So you, 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 what you are telling is that uh, possibly the introduction or the initiation should be in such a way that the entire crowd or the multi, um, multi-language people should come to know that what exactly. Can you just cite a kind of a typical example if I can ask you like what you actually use in the classroom in order to introduce or start the, kickstart the session? Yes, of course. So I'll give you an example. Hello, welcome to my English class. I'm Gardner, so I'm your teacher. Um, I am from London. So I would like you all to like say something about yourself. So I'll go in a circle and I'll pick one of you to speak. Right. And what do you do in general if you find, uh, I would say, uh, we, we know we have active learners and passive learners. Mm -hmm. In case there are passive learners who are not responding to the initiation, like what are the steps that you generally take? Um, sometimes I can use like flashcards where there's writing on them. So you can show that flashcard or that, that person can show the flashcard. Um, okay. So introducing themselves as words um, and then maybe writing their name on the board, which is maybe might be a bit easier rather than speaking. Um, that's another way. Okay, so using flashcards, that is an important part like uh, in, so in order that's to... That's another aid to use, yeah. Right. And uh, like typically, if I speak of the culture that you are uh, catering to from a day to day kind of class, uh, what are the like if I, if I talk of the United Kingdom as a whole sitting here from India, that we, we generally try to gauge like what is happening out there in the class. So can you cite a kind of a real life example? What actually uh, like in the morning you open the door, you walk inside the classroom and how would the, the, you will start and initiate the process and generally what are the challenges that you face? Okay, so, you know, in the morning, walk into the classroom um, and just like, you know, reflecting back on, okay, this is my day, my day has begun. I've got these fantastic students, you know, I'm going to teach them. There may be barriers, but also having that plan, if there is, if there is a setback, have I got that what am I going to do to back it up with? Have I got another backup? So it's always a good idea as a teacher to have a backup plan in place. If something doesn't work, if you're teaching something and your students do not understand, always have a second backup there. Nice point. Thank you very much. Just to remind those who are joining late in our show that we are speaking with Bhavna Kawa directly from London, United Kingdom, and we are speaking on techniques of English teaching to the speakers of the language. So one point which she has made clear is that we need to have a backup plan in order to start the session. 
So if I may ask you the next part, which automatically comes after the backup plan, that mm -hmm. the lesson plan should be uh, planned when there is a wide range of multifarious culture in a typical classroom. So mm -hmm. what are the uh, you know type of people that you generally face, like uh, in the in the school that you are teaching in? What are the different uh, languages uh, most often that you find people, uh, students, and how do you make a kind of a lesson plan to adjust with their learning? Right, okay, so in my previous um, schools I've worked with, I've come across a wide range of learners who have had different ways or types of learning. So we, quite, we call this VAC, V-A-C, so it's visual, auditory, auditory and kinesthetic. So visual learners learn through written language. So they're no good at like, tactile stuff so that it's like pen and paper what's displayed on the board that it's easier for them to learn so that's one aspect um auditory is they will often talk to themselves so they may move their lips they may read out loud they may have difficulty with reading and writing tasks so they'll often do better to talk to a colleague or a tape recorder and hearing what's said to them for example begin a new material with a brief explanation of what is coming so they can conclude it with a summary of what has been covered. That's an auditory. Kinetic would be touching, moving. It's more tactile. So these types of learners are able to engage more. They're able to remember because then they're using their hands. They're able to see what they're doing. They're able to manipulate the material that they're using. So these learners are better at remembering things and how to do things. It's easier for them to learn. True. So it, as you rightly told that BAC would be uh, a typical approach in which we take. What about if I use the term superposition? I, I'm trying to make uh, things clear, like if uh, the auditory and the kinesthetics and there is an overlapping. So is it uh, difficult, becomes difficult for the trainer to uh, know that? Not at all, not at all, because you can combine both into one. You could have one resource and use another resource, which is from the different kind of like areas. So it's an advantage more than it is a disadvantage. Um, you know, they're able to learn using two types of techniques. So it's not an issue at all. Right. And if I may ask you, like uh, when you are uh, starting into a classroom, if I specifically take United Kingdom, like when you start the program, I just want to uh, understand that the types of technique that we uh, teach here in Asian College of Teachers, we have corporate training programs, we have TEFL programs, and we have uh, TEFL in-class programs running all across India. And now with the present COVID situation, we have coupled that up with the, on, uh, with the webinar sessions. So in case that, uh, yeah, so in case that you are facing that kind of a webinar, uh, instead of a classroom where there's 13 boxes or 14 boxes are popping up in front of you. So do you consider that to be a real challenge or do you think that you have certain tips to give to the uh, student or the teachers in order to cop up with this uh, situation, uh, overcome the barriers of learning of BSc model? Um, it can be a challenge doing it online maybe. Um, I think here, I think every, because of lockdown and because everybody's working from home, we've almost got used to this idea. It's a new, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a new way of learning because it's been happening for a while. Um, we've got used to it. And I think it's an advantage. It's a good way to, you know, to communicate, to engage, to, you know, set up meetings, all of that. So yeah, I don't, you know, there's no barrier to it. I think it's an advantage. Okay. In the classes that you are teaching, especially uh, in, in United Kingdom, uh, like when you when we start with the classroom, making these activities and the lesson plans, how do you find that the students are responding? Like, I mean to say, I'm trying to understand that culturally, what would be the barrier or what would be the difference that you find there? And what are the measures that you take in order to overcome them? Okay. Um, the students that I teach online currently, no problem at all, they're fantastic. You will get times where they 
are unmotivated, you'll get times where they'll switch off the screen and run away. It's like they'll come back to you. Um, right. So yeah, they are your barriers. But you've got to try and think, okay, how can I make this exciting? What can I do to like, engage them? And it's I find with my current students, it's having those props there or having giving them praise, like, you know, so well done, you've done really well in this lesson. Um, and how I start the lesson is always by engaging with them. How did how was your day today? What did you do? Did you do anything exciting? So building that relationship, just having that general chat with them before the lesson, I think makes all the difference. It's not like you're going into the lesson, you're going to start teaching and it's like you need to you need to have that little downtime before you start and then just gently ease them in. So I will say, okay, you know, we're now going to start our lesson. So I always kind of structure it and I'll say, we're going to do half an hour of reading. So I'll give them the option. We can either do shared reading or we can, you can just read. So I give them that option and it's having that flexibility, which I think is important as a teacher and as your students. So yes. And then yeah. you know, towards the end, having a little bit of giant time. So saying, I oh, know you're doing really, really well in your lesson. You've learned this, this, this. And giving that constructive feedback is important. And then, you know, maybe having a game at the end of the lesson, just to, just as a reward, which is great because they can go away. It's like, okay, I'm doing good today and I can relax, so yeah. <laughs> Very well said. Uh, this is a wonderful learning that praising and uh, keeping up the relationship with the students, that is what really works out. We always get uh, this kind of an understanding that, um, especially, uh, let us take United Kingdom where we know the official language being English. So uh, if, uh, if the students are trying to move out <clears throat> after doing the TEFL course uh, into different countries, say Spain, Italy, German, Japan, wherever it is, you as a teacher, do you think that a little bit of understanding of the native language of that particular country serves as an advantage? And if it is so, how? Absolutely. Um, if I was to go to another country, I would need to know their language. It's no good for me going to another country not knowing their native language. There, one, there'll be about communication barrier. Two, I'd be totally clueless in <laughs> what I was like, you know, I've come here, I'm teaching these, but I have no knowledge of their language so number one is you know if you're going to go anywhere to teach as a English language teacher know the knowledge of their language it's it's very very important very true but uh, it, 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 it gives rise to another question that if a person is going to say uh, searching for jobs in Spain Italy Germany or Japan how many languages will they learn so what would be your advice on that Sorry, can you say that again? Didn't quite hear you. Uh, my question is that if a person is uh, like, you know, freelancing trainer and yes. he or she is moving to different countries, German, mm -hmm. Japan, Italy, France, etc. So question arises that how many languages can a person learn? So what would you advise on that? Okay, well, that would just depend on where you're going. So if you wanted to just, let's say you just wanted to go to Germany, just stay in that one right. particular place. Um, German. Then, yeah, so I would advise if that's your long term plan and that is where you want to stay, you learn, you pick up the basics. You're not going to learn the whole language, the whole vocab within, you know, a couple of months. So, and if you did want to jump from one country to the next, yes, you can do it, but it's going to take work. You're going to have to learn again the basic languages of each country you're going to visit. Yeah, uh, so uh, the thing is that I, we have got one question, uh, if I may take you yes, with your permission. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Harjit Kaur is asking, Bhavna Madam, how can I get teaching job opportunity in United Kingdom? I'm from India and TEFL certified. So because you're from India, I would say you'd have to retrain to do your BA in QTS, so that's um, Qualified Teaching Certificate in the UK, because I think it's more widely recognised in the UK to do uh, teaching qualification. As you're already truffle qualified, there's no problem. 
However, with your degree, you would need to back up with experience. So you would need that experience. You know, they all in the UK, they ask for, you know, have you had teaching experience? Can you back it up? Where have you worked? What skills can you bring with you, et cetera, et cetera. So I thank, thank you, Bhavna, for answering Harjit's question. Just a quick recap, those who are joining a little bit late, we are in conversation with Bhavna. Uh, she, she has directly joined from United Kingdom, and we are in uh, talking with the techniques of uh, teaching English as a foreign language. Bhavna has already enriched us with the BSc model and how praise and motivation and relationship with the students really helps. Particularly talking of this challenge, like what the students mostly ask me that, when I'm going to United Kingdoms, typically if I'm uh, if I am willing to get in a job as an Indian, uh, do, what do you think is your general opinion that is uh, uh, is it uh, typically after doing a TEFL or a program like this, uh, how will you uh, look forward that getting a job into a native English speaking country vis a vis going to job countries like who are not have got English as a, a mother tongue like Spain, Italy, Germany. Would you suggest more uh, inclination towards the non-native countries or still the native countries would be uh, taking TEFL and as a certified, depending upon the academic qualification? Your views, please. Um, I would say there's no, there's no such barrier, but you, it's, it's advisable. English is a global speaking language. We all use it. Um, it's, you know, if you were going to go to another country, English is your number one language you need to learn. No doubt about it. Everyone knows. So, um, yes, there may be barriers, but again, you can overcome these barriers, you know. So, yeah. So, like, uh, as far as I have read, like, I have talked with you at length that primarily the key point is that you are teaching the special children. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Right. right. So, uh, would you consider that a candidate? Uh, who has got a uh, knowledge or an expertise on a specific skill like you are into special language, does it serve as an advantage in getting a job even in the native countries? Um, yes, I think it does because you've got that extra added skill. You've got that, you know, you've got, you've got your qualifications, you've got that experience. So you're able to engage a lot more. Um, you know, and I think it's it's a great idea if somebody wanted to like go abroad, teach a child who was or teach children maybe who have got different abilities, and you're able to bring your experience with you, maybe provide new skills. You know, so yeah. We just got another question quickly from uh, Ronak Swain. I think that is a very pertinent question. Now, he's asking that, Madam, what is the scenario to get a job in European countries like Lithuania, Luxembourg, Slovakia, Czechoslovakia, etc., or the former Soviet Union? Are they giving jobs to Indian teachers as we are non-native? Any idea, Bhavna, on this? Oh, I'm not quite sure on that. But what I would advise is research. I mean, there's, there's a website, actually, which I can recommend, and it's called TEFL Graduates. It's where I learned, done my learning quite recently during lockdown, they have a website which lists all the jobs and it gives you all the information. Um, I'm not quite sure on how to answer that question, but the information is all on that website. And even if you do a Google search, you should get, you know, a whole list, but yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, just one thing which comes automatically, like uh, when you are teaching for, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say English as a language to the yeah. young people, uh, you know, making them understand about the metaphor, say, for example, like it am like um, as as white as a snow or as clear as the sky. Yes. Does it come as a difficulty for you to make understand those who don't understand English or the English yes. metaphors? Yes, absolutely. Right. So you said as white as snow. Th yes, this can be difficult for, you know, non speaking English individuals. So what I have found is using pictures of some form. Um, okay. So having the color white and having a picture of snow and saying, you know, white as snow. So almost having two kinds of images 
and blending them together sometimes works which i've done in my teaching and yes these are the kind of techniques that work with some kids okay so that is i think that's a convenient way to convey the metaphor to them yeah i mean that's how i learn and i thought well, this is the easiest way i'm going to learn it so yeah, i think absolutely. it's a great idea to like pass it on sure and um what like you have been many years into teaching so you have got varied experience if i may ask you like i know that it would be difficult for you might say that no shona this is uh, how I, I i can tell you what would you rank like if i take one two three four five the basic five parameters that you see in a teacher irrespective of country uh discipline etc what do you according to you would be the five top points as a teacher I would say clear communication is number one. Empathy, patience, of course. I think we all know that. Um, being approachable, you need to be approachable to your students because you know you don't you don't want your students to shy away from you. And generally, just engaging with them, I'd say they're my top five. Sure. So uh, clear communication, empathy. Uh, uh to any order to engage around people so when you talk about this point like clear communication mm -hmm. what precisely you mean that is it uh, the accent or is it a neutral accent is it something which i can convey what i am thinking in terms of clear what would you specify when, when we mean by because it's very generic term clear communication of so course, if you can just yes. post like on us i would say just neutral communication like how i'm talking to you right now um you know not building it up to anything more than that just generally communicating with them um you know and being approachable yes right so uh, as bhavna told this is a very important point which i would like to make to the uh, audience that it is basically how i am conveying my thoughts and it, it is better that we have a kind of a neutral accent to that so um, just to take this point forward in united kingdom being an indian for example i am a graduate along with a tefl certificate i have a clear criminal background i am presentable and i am going forward for a job as an english teacher it might even be a subject teacher that i am good in maths and physics what would be the most coveted uh, certification or what which is the most i would say that the most the authority what they want in united kingdom to become an english teacher after completing tefl Okay, so it would either be now there can be a wide range. It can either be you can have a BA in English language. Okay. Um, that's one. But with that, you would still need to do your QTS, which is a certified what? teacher qualification. Um, with your TOEFL qualification, this TEFL qualification allows you to work around the world. so i can go and teach in india i could go and teach in spain right so with my tofu i could still work here but i would need my ba in teaching as a degree to teach here so you could do a degree in engineering but you'd still need your um they could we call it a pgce which is a specialist teaching qualification so you could do your pgce after you've done any of any discipline of your degree however if you just wanted to be a teacher and you had your mindset on that it's a qts in the uk okay and what would be the procedure like is it like uh, uh, they have a website where the students can apply for this a uh, qts and how to go about right so once you've done your let's say college you would go on to you know you'd research the universities and it's normally done online so it depends on your grades and what grades you have got um there's a lot of universities nowadays that you know they do the teaching qualification so you can go straight in you'd be interviewed of course um there's a select few that they they'll take in for an interview whether you know it could be just to generally question them you know why do you want to do this course why do you want to be a teacher so and then your course can be 3 years or it can be 4 years so 3 years will just be 
of study, four years is you have your placement year in a school. You might be guaranteed a job after you've done your degree. So that's how it generally tends to work here in the UK. As you rightly told that I have been uh, in my in our placement session, I pointed this figure. It is good that we have got you. I would like to stress to the audience and we'll just try to extend a few more minutes with this kind of question, which you told that uh, why uh, you want to become a teacher. Now, this is a very pertinent question, Bhavna, which I face with my students. So uh, when we deal with this part, like in an introductory video, as you know, that it has become very important nowadays to make a video and that is how they check your body language, etc. How would you, for such a prolonged period of experience you have, can you throw some light, like point, what a person would speak on how, why I want to become a teacher? What would be the significant points? Your advice is please. Okay, from my personal advice, um, I've always known that I wanted to teach but I never done anything with it. And I thought, okay, so now is the time. Let me try. Um, I think number one, it's rewarding. You're giving something back, but you're also learning about your students. So you're able to like go away from the lesson and think, oh yeah, I could do this in the next lesson. It's having all those ideas. And it's nice because you see the journey of each of your students and how they're doing and how they're progressing. Um, also providing that encouragement is key you know giving that giving them that push to like you know get to where they want to be or you know so yeah true true uh, we have just one uh, very valid question from gayatri tv she, she's asking bhavna madam having been in teaching for a long time my question to you is as a teacher from non native speakers of english is there any technique wherein you engage the students to communicate or practice speaking in English without switching back or forth in their local language, especially in India? Yes, yes. <laughs> this can be a bit difficult at times. Um, I think going into a class, just speak English throughout. It can be frustrating. I would advise having different props. So you're just pointing, but you're not going, you're not speaking your native language, you're speaking English all the way throughout the lesson. That is the only way your students are going to learn quicker, I feel, as a person. So, yeah. I think you are speaking more to, into a process of immersion, like you mm -hmm. immerse them in whatever props or uh, the ways you use, but you have to speak, dream, eat everything in English. Otherwise they won't be. Absolutely, I think, I think from my point of view, and it has worked with recent, like clients that I've te taught previously is, yeah, just, you know, not like really difficult, but make it simple that, that they're able to understand. And I think you can kind of see progress, yes. So in that way, if I may uh, just ask you one thing, that a career or an academic career with a thorough, uh, I would say a continuous uh, career in English right from uh, bachelor's then a master's hmm. does that help or if there is a change of career which most um, uh, people come either from engineering or a management background and then going to teaching what would you what would be views on that okay there is no barrier um, doesn't matter whether you've done engineering whether you've done a language in Spanish as a degree um, whether you've done architecture it doesn't matter because if you've done those degrees, you can still do your PG PGCE, which right. is specifically in teaching. Now, with those qualifications that you've done your original degree in, you could teach in those subjects. You could teach in a college and you could teach base, you could teach architecture, you could teach business studies. As long as you've got your PGCE or yes, you can you can do that. There is no barrier to it. There are ways around it. Definitely. That sounds very optimistic. So uh, we have just come almost to the end of the session. Bhavna, I think that what you, uh, to just to round up and summarize the discussion is that we have got a very, very positive note from this discussion. The note num uh, first would be that there is no barrier in terms of language, number one. 
And uh, in terms of whatever that you do, whether you are teaching into a native country or a non-native country, whatever be the academic background, still you can go forward as long as you are presentable, you are empathetic and you can communicate things properly. So uh, I would like to thank Bhavna for your time joining far from United Kingdom, London, a heartfelt thank from Asian College of Teachers uh, for joining with us. Uh, thank you very much for the audience, for a patient listening. I think it has been very enriching. We we'll learn a lot of things and most importantly, under these conditions, Bhavna has shown us a proper optimistic, clear picture where the sun is shining out there and we can see whatever be the barrier, be it language, be it academic, be it professional, we can still go out and we can get a job as an English teacher. This is Shauna. Yeah, so thank you, Bhavna, joining uh, with us and have a great day ahead. This is Shonak signing out from Asian College of Teachers. Stay tuned for the upcoming sessions. We are not done yet. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank Bhavna. You. Thank you.